I am going to be sharing a website where you can get a whole lot of royalty free images to use in your artwork and demonstrating this clownfish and anemone that I have painted using one of those images. Hi, I am Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today's video is sponsored by Graphic Stock. With over 300,000 graphics, photos, and images, they've got the largest selection of unlimited downloads available on the internet. I have personally purchased images from some of these stock reference sites before and paid as much as $30. I think that might be how much I paid for the Fox that I did a while back. That can definitely add up when you want a lot of those images. Graphic Stock's annual plan is $99. That gives you unlimited access to all of their images. All of the memberships come with a 100% royalty free agreement, which means you have full rights to use any of those photos in your own artwork. You can sell the artwork, you can sell prints. It is all legal. You're not gonna get sued by the photographer because that's what you're paying that membership for. And Graphic Stock has a deal for us. If you go to graphicstock.com slash YouTube, or you can click on the link in the video description below, you can get a seven day free trial, which will allow you to download 140 images that you can use in your artwork now. That's a lot of images and a really good deal. I do warn you, there are so many good images on that site. Prepare to set aside a few hours because I spent hours downloaded images. There are so many good ones. So now let's go ahead and check out the tutorial I've made using one of those images. I have started by painting my canvas. This is a Frederick's watercolor canvas board, a solid color, and then drawing my clownfish and the anemones out. Now I'm going to airbrush my background in. I've started by adding some of the light areas and through most of this, when you're airbrushing a blurry background like this, it's going to look like really bad spray paint until you get towards the end. Even me, as many times as I've done this, as I'm working, I'm constantly thinking, oh, I ruined this one. It's not gonna get any better. You just have to keep layering until it does start to look right. So just a little tip there, don't get frustrated. Just keep layering and layering until you want it or get it how you want it to look. The other thing with this is that when you are trying to get a blurry background or an out of focus background like this, I'm keeping the airbrush at a bit of a distance. I don't want to get it up too close where I get harsher lines. I want it to look very fuzzy. So you can see my airbrush is actually being held back quite a ways. I'm using Createx airbrush paint for this. And I just keep layering and layering and layering and I'm going to get some terrible layers that it feels like I made it worse and I'm just going to keep working on it until I get it how I want it. One of the things that I did on this one, at one point I knew that something was missing. So I took a photo with it and put it into Photoshop right up against my reference photo so I could see what I needed. And the main thing that in this case I was missing was this deep burgundy color. For some reason I just wasn't seeing that when I looked at the reference photo by itself. But when I put mine up against that reference photo right next to it, it made it really obvious that that's what I was missing. So you can see there I'm using that burgundy color. And I'm going to airbrush some of the arms on the anemone that are further away so that they seem more out of focus. If I were to paint those with the paintbrush, they're just not going to be quite as soft as what I can get with the airbrush. The airbrush helps it to have that fuzzy look. Now I will come back through with the actual paintbrush to define a little bit, but not too much. I've airbrushed a little bit on the clownfish, not because it needed to be there, but because I had the wrong color in the airbrush. And I was thinking, well, heck, I may as well go ahead and block in some of that color while I've got this yellow in here. Adding a little bit of highlights on some of that anemone. Now at this point, I can see that the anemone is kind of blending in too much into the background. So what I'm doing is coming back through with this dark color, I've mixed black and a deep, deep blue, and I'm darkening up some of that area so that when I do come back through and paint more details on the anemone, those will stand out better. So the next thing I'm going to do is move on to my paint brushes. I'm using Liquitex Basics and Heavy Body, depending on which color I needed for all of this. And I am loosely blocking in my shadows. I'm not worrying too much about tiny detail yet. That's going to be my very last step. I wanna get my general lights and darks blocked in at this point. I'm using a softer brush to apply the paint and then a stiff round brush just to smudge out the edges so that it stays very soft. And that is really easy to do on these watercolor canvas boards because they're so smooth. You can blend really easily on these, much more so than a canvas that has a little bit more tooth. So when you're working in acrylics and you want a smooth look, or even when you're airbrushing, these canvases are perfect for that. So you can see I'm blocking in more of the highlights and shadows. 
and they don't have to be perfect. I'm really not worried about my color right now. I'm gonna come back and adjust that. I'm letting a lot of that first background color that I initially painted on the canvas, I'm letting a lot of that show through and work for me to save time just again, to block in these colors. That gives me my mid-range, my darkest points and my lighter points, all with really just using the two colors at this point, the titanium white, and I'm using a bit of burnt umber with some black mixed in with it for the majority of the shading here. I am coming back through with a little bit of magenta and purple tones in addition to those colors. But right now you can see they're very dull looking. There's not much that, they don't look like they glow. I need these to look like they're translucent in a lot of this and that the light is coming through them. I'm going to be able to do that later on by glazing color. And when I glaze, what I'm doing is using a little bit of paint and a lot of water, or I say a lot of water. I'm not using enough that it drips all over the place, but I am thinning it down with water to make the paint more translucent. And a lot of the colors that I'm going to be using for those glazes, like the magentas and yellows, they're translucent anyway. So here I'm glazing orange right over the lights and the darks. And this is just straight orange from the Liquitex Basics paint. It is very, very translucent, so it's really good for glazing like this. And it's my first step in creating that glow that I need on this anemone. And it is going to take a lot of glazing. It's not one where you can just do one glaze and call it done. If you want that real definite glow like what I'm going here with the lighting, you're probably going to need to do multiple layers. So once I got that in there, I'm coming back through and adding more highlights better defining those. And you can see how I'm really focusing on the portions of the anemone that are up close. The ones that are behind the clownfish, those are slightly out of focus, so I really don't wanna do much with those. Glazing yellow, that is not going to stay yellow, but when I glaze the other colors on top, it's gonna to help to warm them up. I'm coming through with a round brush and adding a little bit of detail. These are really just dots and speckles. It's not something where I'm having to sit and copy my reference photo exactly. I'm really just going for close at that point to create the texture that I need on the anemone. I could paint it exact, but it would take a lot longer and I really don't think it would look any better than what I've got here. I just need to create that texture. And I mixed a peach color for a lot of the dots that I'm coming through and doing now. You can see these add additional highlights. I will come back over and glaze color on top of that too once I get all of these blocked in. And I'm using a synthetic hog hair liner brush for this detail that I'm doing at this point. Lots of little detail in there. And again, it's just speckles. It's not something that I'm worried about every dot being in the, the exact right spot. It really doesn't matter as long as I'm co somewhat close. So I've glazed that burgundy color over portions of this. You can see now that anemone is starting to get that glow. So I'm going to go ahead and let that set for now. I'm gonna come back and do more details later, but I'm gonna start on the fish at this point. I've started by adding the highlights with the yellow, and now I'm coming through with the deeper oranges. I've blocked those in, and now I'm going to block in the eye. And when I say block in, it basically, what I mean is I'm just getting a base layer. I'm going to come back and do so much detail and glazing over that. I just need a general idea of where my lights and my darks are going to go. I'm using that liner brush again to get the finer details. And then I've switched over to a round brush. I'm actually using a combination of a round brush and then a filbert brush for blocking in the white. You can see this white is really bright. And on the reference photo, it was also very bright. I'm going to do a lot of glazing later on to tone it down so that your attention isn't just on that white stripe. You can see I've got a lot of detail in the face and the detail that I just did was really bright and I glazed a little bit of yellow and orange over that, the area right under his eye, and that helped to tone it down while still maintaining that detail. So I'm coming back through, I'm using quite a bit of the transparent mixing white, forgot the name of it for a second there, transparent mixing white to get the white portions on the face and then I'm glazing yellow over it. And I'm just going to repeat that process again and again until I get the face to look how I want. And towards the end, I'm going to come back later on and do even more detail there or more glazing to create more of a glow on the clownfish. So onto the next section, again, just blocking in my lights and my darks, getting a general idea for where I want those to be. It does not need to be perfect. 
because I will be coming back through and doing a lot of detail. Now for the scales here, the, I don't want these to be d definite defined scales because when you look at a clownfish, you really don't see scales like you would on a goldfish. I just want a hint of them. So I'm blocking them in and then I'm going to glaze right over that to tone it down. locking in the back of the, the clownfish. And this will not have a lot of detail back here because that starts moving into the area that's out of focus again. So this just gives me my general lights and darks. I've got everything pretty much where it needs to go. After this is when I start really refining things, really working on the little detail and getting everything just right. Got a few highlights in there. For a lot of these highlights, I'm mixing yellow with white so that it shows up. The yellow is so translucent that that's really not going to give me the highlights I need. So by mixing white with the yellow, that'll give me that highlight and then I can glaze over it if I want to tone that down later. For the highlights on the black, I just add a bit of blue. Now, I've got to tone down the anemone that's behind the clownfish because he's blending into it too much. So I've taken brown and just glazed over that. Made sure it was very, very soft and it darkens it up so that I can make that clownfish really pop. You see, I'm glazing quite a bit of yellow over him to, again, separate him from that anemone. The colors are similar, I, but I still need him to stand out from that, even though they are close. Adding more of the transparent mixing white for my highlights here on the face. When that dries, I will come back over and glaze yellow, which comes back to helping me have that really nice glow. And I'm using a Taclon bristled filbert brush there just to apply this. And I'm applying it fairly dry. I'm not using a lot of water with that mixture. I'm gonna darken up that anemone behind the fish again. And I've gotta do that in layers because I do want it to still be translucent so it works with the airbrushing that I've done before. But because it is so translucent, it's not going to be dark enough. So by doing it in a couple of layers, it allows me to still have it look like the airbrushed portions, but I'm able to get it dark enough. Now I do have to make sure that it is completely dry before I add additional layers of glazing like that. Otherwise the previous layers will just lift off the canvas. And it only takes a few minutes to dry, shorter if I use the hairdryer. So coming back through with my liner brush and adding more details. And you can see how this just sets the, this portion of the anemone forward by putting these white highlights on here. And I will tone this down some, but look how it pushes it forward and it helps me to create a lot of depth, a lot of contrast between the out of focus portion and the background versus up front that has tons and tons of detail. That contrast between the out of focus and the detail is really what helps it to look more three dimensional more detail in there and then I'm glazing the yellow right over it and I can glaze that yellow over the orange as well not just the white areas just the final touches here and these little bits all add up to having it look much much more realistic at the end even though it doesn't seem like I'm doing a whole lot it looks like the brush is just moving all over the place these little teeny adjustments just continuously working on this will help it to look that much more realistic I know some people were surprised when I shared a photo of this the night before it was finished on Instagram they thought it was done at that point but by coming back through the next day it made such a huge difference and you can go see the before and after at that point on Instagram where a lot of people thought it was done just coming back through spending another three or four hours really was worth worth it and what a difference it made so here is my final painting and oh I just love this photo this one is definitely going on my own wall as soon as I get it framed I'm so in love with clownfish anyway top that off with an awesome reference photo and I'm just so excited with how this turned out Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, our Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Plus. all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I get offered a lot to do different promotional videos or sponsored videos for you guys and I turn most of them down because usually it's not a product I like. I only do these videos if it's something that I'm personally really excited about. 
this was definitely one. I have a folder full of so many of these images on my computer right now, and I'm so excited about this clownfish. It's one of my favorite paintings that I've ever done, and it's definitely going on my wall as soon as I get a frame for him. But look at all these images that you guys will probably see me painting sometime in the very near future.